Good afternoon. My name is Julia Oku Jax, and what I am first and foremost is a teacher, and what I am secondly is a brand enthusiast. And it's given me great joy. Everything else I do in life revolves around that, including my faith, between those two things. So it gives me great joy to be here, and especially. I've been given the hardest shift, which is when people are eating, so they're distracted. So you're going to have to work with me here. I pretend that what I'm saying is the most exciting thing. Please, we have a deal? Thank you. Now, there have been several topics that have been given, and I think um, I prefer the one that Uche gave me first, which is before the cash. Creative approaches to building your brand. I can't tell you creative approaches to building money. I can tell you creative approaches to sweating, to get, to get your, your business on the road. But creative approaches to getting money, mm, no. So I hope I haven't decided, um, disappointed you. I actually am really happy to come just after that pitch because that was something I used to do like five times a week sometimes twice a day when I was in advertising full time. Yes, you know, we had to give pitch, pitches. And the elevator pitch was my best kind of pitch. But I'd like to talk to you about the brand and what to do. How many people think you need tons of money before you can build a brand? How much money do you think you need to build a brand? Anybody? You promise you'll work with me? Okay. So anybody, how much do you need to build a brand? Sorry? Zero? Oh no, you don't need zero. That's uh, in the realm of fairy tales. Yes. Give me a figure. I can't take much to the bank. I can take a figure to the bank. At least, let's say millionaire. Millionaire, okay. Any other opinions in the room? Actually, maybe a better question. Sorry, was that uh, your hand up, sir? Okay. 10,000 naira? Okay. Any other figures? Maybe I should ask you do you actually want to build a brand? Or do you just want to make money and. To that lady. Sorry, this is gender matters. Oh, yes, without any shame. Yes, yes, madam. Okay, all right. Did she say, did anybody say what to you? You had in mind, or do you want to say it differently? Because I'm really getting excited now. Yes, but you say it differently if you're going to say it. Different from everybody. Value is an aspect of branding, but it's not the brand. Now, let me just see do you know how branding started? You know in the villages, most people have a chicken or a goat. Okay, I think I'm really a superstar now. <laughs> a chicken or a goat or something that they, they tie a red, red, you don't understand? Or maybe it has some mark on it. Right, so that's how you know among all the black goats in the village. This one belongs to Odofia. This one belongs to Omofia. You understand? Okay. Now that's exactly what branding is about. It's an identifying mark. It came from the practice of the, um, well, anybody who owns livestock, essentially, to sear their own unique mark on their livestock. So when the cows or the goats or the sheep, whatever, go out to mingle and graze, you can tell what it's what. It's like a, a means of identification. 
at a very basic level. Branding is also the aggregation of what your customer or public, the people who currently or will buy your products, think about when they hear or think about your brand name. So I think you really touched the, um, the key definitions of branding. And could you give yourself a round of applause? Just because you believe, please give, not give me. Because if you give me, you're going to give me a big one. So give yourself what you think you deserve. Okay, I think more of you. So what are the characteristics of a brand? And for those four gentlemen, very brave gentlemen, who came out and made their pitches here, and all of you who are planning to meet your investors somewhere along the line, it's very important to know this. Your brand must be unique. It must be distinct. It must offer benefits. It must reflect and affect your reputation. It must affect your bottom line. When I got into advertising and marketing, marketing communications, for me, I learned a favorite definition of brand, and it's just simply a cluster of benefits. There has to be an aggregation, a collection of benefits. If it doesn't benefit me, why am I going there? Why am I going to use your service? So my alternative topic to what Uche had was branding before the big box come. So yes, you can start with as little as 10,000 Naira or less. And you can use as much as 1 million and more. But once you start a brand, a business, and the three quarters of you in this room are business owners, once you start a business, you have a brand on your hands. You have a brand on your hands. It could be an emerging brand, it could be a young brand, it could be a fighter brand, it could be an established brand, but boom! As soon as you've registered that name and the business has started, you have a brand on your hands. Now, what I'm going to try and do is to help you, equip you to handle that brand, to be the brand custodian and build up the brand architecture. Why you think Startup South South, SMEs, do we have that kind of war chest? No, you don't need to have that kind of war chest. But as an SME, you must pay as much attention to branding as big businesses do. Because the principles are the same. Whether you're a small business or a big business, the principles are the same. What are the quick wins? Your name, number one. I have a friend who runs a business called Ibinapo Ventures. Can anybody guess what the business does? Can anybody? Now, how many of your businesses truly are like Ibinapo Ventures? Sorry? Thank you. That is where we want to start. Many of us want to start, put our wife's name, the four children, and your husband's, and the, you, the owner's name there somewhere. And sons. It doesn't make sense. But sometimes it makes sense, if you're savvy enough. I have another friend who has a business called Versh L'Accessoire. Aha. It's a tongue, tongue, tongue twister, but you know what? It sounds exotic, so does it get, get your attention? Fine. Now, for the women, when I say accessoire, what does it sound like? It's like, okay, even the men in this room. I, I, I know I had a fantastic audience here. You know. So, and the name is made from a combination of her two children's names. But it sounds fine. So you put Vesh beside Ibinambo Ventures. Which one are you going to be interested in? Yes. Thank you. It's your name. Your name has to be captivating. That is your first port of call. So for the gentleman with the tongue twisting name, it could work. It could, it could work. But you're going to spend a lot of money making it work. Human beings, you may say we like innovation, 
But trust me, many of us stay on the side, which is why we are still giving airtime to people like Donald Trump. Many of us are fundamentally conservative. Okay, on the Trump issue, that's my opinion entirely. <laughs> So your name should be distinctive, it should be memorable, it should be easy to pronounce. Your visual signature should be spot on. Your logo should be good. The fonts you, you use, there are certain fonts that go with certain businesses. You can't have a fashion business and you're using a rigid typeface. You can't or you shouldn't have a food business and, you're not, and, not, and you don't use Foody colors and foody shapes. You understand? You can't sell me something that is gray and it's food and I'm supposed to love it. Why? Who likes gray food? You do? Even if it's not gray. <laughs> and when you're creating your visual signature, be authentic. Be original and let it be organic. Let it come from you. Don't copy or try to pass yourself off as an already established uh, brand. You don't have the funds to fight that battle and believe me, they can take you out. They can take you out. They will bury you without even thinking about it. Engage the services of a good visual designer. I would like to talk to Uche about this. I know he doesn't have a prize for you guys, whoever the winner will be, whoever the judges proclaim the winner will be. But that's something I'm very interested in. I'm interested in how people tell their stories visually. And that's something I've been willing to work with the winners on. Okay. Thank you very much. If possible, have a tagline. Something that gives a promise. You know, it sounds so simple. Most of you know what I'm saying, but how many of you have done it? One person in the room, and that's the that's two people in the room. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to ask you, what's your tagline? I start, because of my positive gender discrimination, I will start with the lady over there. Yes, I said I'm not sorry about it. That's who I am. That's who I am. Yeah, the girls' club is alive. Ma'am? Raising 21st century learners soaring above expectations. It's too long. Free consultancy service. I'll just take one more. The guy at the back, in blue. What's the name of your business? Alexander Stephen IQ. Alexander Stephen IQ. IQ. Ideas. Ideas, process, results. Okay. Do you know what Alexander Stephen does? Consulting. Sorry? Consulting. Ideas, process, results. Okay. All right. So, if you have it, then use it. Make sure your brand promise is tied to your USP, which is your unique selling proposition. Make sure you have a USP. And your USP can be anything. When you're an SME, when you're anyone right now, your USP can, it can be that you're fast, it can be that you're around the corner, it could, that be, it could be that you're friendly, that you're caring. Whatever you choose your USP to be, it must be something that you can live up to in every interaction with your public. Your business card. If I ask you all to give me your business cards, how many people do not have a business card in this room? Okay. Why do you not have a business card? Are you running a business? Madam, I know you're running a business. Why do you not have a business card? Sorry? Why? How do you mean? You know what? Just start. 
Do you have a business card for yourself personally? You know people do have business cards that serve two purposes. Don't, don't overthink. No, seriously, don't overthink it. You can always change it at the beginning stage. You can change it. Many of us fiddle with things until we get to a point, yes. You have to get to your aha. And please, when you're getting to your aha, don't do it by committee. I don't like decisions by committees, like death by committee. Everybody has an opinion and it's not necessarily your opinion. It doesn't reflect necessarily what you want. Now, your email signature is also a very important, cheap branding tool. I, I love the yeses I hear from this room. I hope they're translating to, yes, I've done it. Okay. It's just about a third of people. Which means it needs to be said. Put your email signature, put your slogan. If your slogan is too long, trim it. If your slogan does not reflect your brand promise, change it. It has to be organic. How many people, how many of you, there are a lot of techies in the room, I guess. I may not be using the right language. You will understand because you can call me Auntie Julia or Madame Julia as they call me, you know. So you can see my age, my generation and yours is kind of, maybe two generations, you know. But like I said, I love anything to do with branding and I love anything to do with teaching. But I still want to know, do you have a blog, the techies, do you have a blog? It's a very easy, do you have? Yes. Do you know how to start a blog? Do you know that thing called Google? I love Google. More importantly, I love to talk to people who have written blogs. I mean, someone like Bella Niger, I don't know if they're blogs or whatever platforms, or live, I'm not sure they're, that they're quite the same, but I, I'm fascinated by people like that. I, I go up to them and ask them, how did you do it? I remember when Bella, Bella Niger was starting up, and um, I was in a conference where she spoke, and I asked her, how do you plan to make money out of this? And she told me, she told me her business plan. You know, and she started just like any one of you in this room. But she stayed with it. But that is a subject for another thing. So you, you need to use your social media. You, you, you're in a generation where everybody, you can have instant vintage. Everybody can become extremely popular just like that. In the same way, you can also become extremely unpopular and irrelevant just like that. So, but you, you have so many things. Twitter, you have your Facebook, you have your LinkedIn, you have your Google+, Plus. you have everything at your disposal the world is your oyster why are you not using it any reason because i i want to know any problem any do you have any problem with using the social media platforms available no problem do you like the social media platforms available yes okay why are you not using them Are you waiting to make the millions then you get someone to, to do them for you, do it for you? Yes. Maybe. Don't wait. No. Don't wait. Start from where you are. Steve Jobs didn't wait. No, he didn't wait. Those people, if you're anxious to get your message out and your brand out there, don't wait. Use your voicemail also as a marketing tool. You know when people call you and there's a message at the end? Okay, I'm one of those that's irritated by voice messages. True. And truly, if you can ban bulk SMSs, especially those that come from the uh, communications, yes, I would be right there, lining up to see. And they're taking 20 naira of my money every month on asked. So I plan to make a, a case with one of them. I won't tell you who it is. I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> But they need to stop taking my 20. I'm sure they're taking all of our 20 naira. Uh -huh. The more we keep quiet, the more they're going to take it. So I'm not going to keep quiet. Okay, thank you. You're with me. All right. Okay. But 
Just in case you have customers who are not irritated by your voice message, please do send them. Tag it along. You can just talk about the slogan, you know. Even the way people respond to you. Sorry, when, when, you, when people call you and they really pick up your phone. That's also another way in which you brand. And you have to do it consistently. Please, if you get feedback that is irritating, change it. Seriously. There's a bank I work for, and every time we got to put on their voice message, the music they played drove me crazy, the voice they used drove me crazy. You understand? And, um, and they kept saying, please hold. Your call is very important to us. You are very... Get off the phone. <laughs> Stay in touch with your customers on special days. Now, this you have to do with common sense. Please don't send me the kind of SMS that my bank sends me. Hmm? They don't even know my name, so sometimes it's Oku Jacks, Inyan Jacks, Jacks Oku. They're not quite sure. Because you know, they had this know your customer thing some years ago, and I said, Okay, this is who I used to be, this is who I am now. You can call me who I am now. And they decided to just do all permutations of my name. And they sent you everything. When it's Salah, they sent me. When it's Christmas, they sent me. When it's New Year, they sent me. When it's birthday, they sent me. They're not sure whether I'm male or female. They're not sure. I'm just I was wondering the other day, say, when I die, will they keep sending these messages? <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I mean, and the technology people in this room think about it. How do you know when the people have died? And they're still on the bulk SMS list. And stuff. Come on. Okay. So, talk to people on their birthday, call them by name so that people know it's not a bulk SMS. It makes a difference. If you really call me or send me a text and I know that you're somebody, I may not reply, but I know that you care. Join all relevant groups you can. All. I think there was a question about how many people have joined um, certain professional networks and groups. Okay, can we do a hand? The eyes and the nays. Okay, the nays have it. So the question is, how are you networking? How do people know about your business? Do you give talks? Do you mentor? Do you coach? Do you give your services for free? Do you ask for referrals? Do you ask people, okay, if you bring a customer, listen, banks are doing it, so no shame. Hmm? Bring in a customer, refer a customer, and you get something off your next interaction with me. Those are all ways in which you build your brand. And remember I said that it has to be, branding has to be profitable. It has to affect your bottom line. You can't spend all that time and it doesn't affect your, your, uh, your, your bottom line. Ask your customers for feedback that can be used as testimonials. Have a website. Maybe you don't need a website, maybe you do. You customize it to your needs. But most of you have a, a Facebook page, right? Okay, some of you have a Facebook page, right? Okay, listen. We need to step up. It's the south-south. It's not the south of the back of beyond. You understand? Berry Eye is the treasure base of the nation. We need to step up again. The people who live elsewhere are just like you and I. But you know what? Their hustle is tight. So we have to make our hustle tight. This is part of my passion. This is why I'm sitting here today with you. I'm sure why everybody else here is here with you today to get you to make your hustle tight. So if you don't have a Facebook page, if I know about Facebook and I can use Facebook, you can use Facebook. Right? Okay, now move between from Okay, uh, so are you coming to tell me my time is up? Like five minutes left? I was just having great time with it. Okay, all right. Use your face Facebook. And then also know that 
everything communicates. Your signboard, your receipt book, your logo, your business card, Margaret, you need to get that business card. Mm? The SMS you send, your salespersons, your colleagues, your office, the areas you allow the public to have access to. It communicates whether your toilet is clean or not. It, yes, it does. It communicates when I come to your office and there's dust everywhere. It communicates when I come to your office and it's dusty. It communicates when I come to your office and the person at your front desk is eating granuts or bully, which I really hate in offices. No, there's no nice way of eating bully. You have to eat it in your house. Finish, because you have to eat it with your hands. It's finger food with oil. Right? If you eat it in your office, don't eat it in the front desk. It communicates. Communicates whether your front office people or the people that you're interacting with have bad personal hygiene. I will not go into details, but it does communicate. Communicates whether you keep your promises or keep saying sorry. How you handle failure communicates very powerfully as well. They all add up to the brand. And then you need to know that your personal brand and the corporate brand are intertwined. People try to split, and indeed we can work on each. But at the fundamental le level, both are intertwined. And you must be intentional about building your brand. It won't happen by chance. So to round up, okay. to round up, the principles of branding are the same, whether you're an SME, a small startup, medium-sized organization, or a large corporate. Whether you have tons of money or not, one million naira, 10,000 naira, you must dedicate, dedicate specific time and significant time to building your brand. You must do it intentionally. As the CEO of Self-Employed Incorporated, you are the face of your brand. You are the person that we see. So neglect investing in your brand at your own peril because new brands pop up every day. The world is becoming, your generation is becoming very, very, it's very, very entrepreneurial. And customers will move on if they have no compelling reason to stay with you. And finally, maybe this will encourage you, strong, effective, compelling branding leads to cash in the bank. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.